What's going on everyone and happy Thursday. The market didn't really move too much today as around 52% of stocks in the S&P 500 finished in the green. There was a lot of chop. Some areas of the market did very well while other areas definitely sank down. But what's very interesting is that we had one of the big tech powerhouses, Netflix, report blowout earnings today after the bell and the stock just fell, right? And that happened. And this is why we say don't play earnings because for multiple reasons, um, it's just a losing game over time. So of course, we're going to talk about what's going on with Netflix, but we're also going to talk about uh, where the money's flowing right now and some other important information to know about for tomorrow. Don't forget, we have the Bitcoin halving event coming up tomorrow as well. We have one more day left for the week, so let's end it with a bang. So let's get right into today's episode. Yeah, the overall market here is actually pretty rough today, Mike. Like, again, it tried to pop up this morning, kind of got up into that 504, 50 resistance, right around that resistance intraday yesterday, and actually started coming right back to the downside. So we saw that pretty sharp move back down, and hey, the SPY is actually closing under $500 today, Mike. That's not a good sign. You know, we haven't seen a close under $500 in quite a while. So this is going to be a very interesting day tomorrow morning, especially Especially because of the Netflix earnings going south and not just Netflix we even had TSM go down a lot this morning as well kind of dragging the chip sector down so Mike it was a pretty rough day out there I know Netflix actually had pretty good numbers though if we go over to the article on Yahoo you know the uh, the estimates were blown uh, out of the water for the most part, you know, uh, the EPS, the revenue ended up beating. The one thing that was a slight miss was actually their guidance. But I don't know, Mike, uh, you know, they guided $9.49 billion versus estimates of 9.51. Like, if that's really what's truly sending the stock down, I, I don't know, Mike. I think investors are more scared of that valuation at the moment. Exactly. So in simple terms, they brought in more revenue than everyone was expecting. They brought in more profit than everyone was expecting. They added more subscribers subscribers than everyone was expecting, and they just slightly just very slightly uh, missed on the revenue expectations going forward, and this equated to a falling stock price in after hours. But that is how earnings season works. Sometimes you have good news and a falling stock price, and sometimes you have bad news and a stock that goes up, right? When it comes to earnings plays, the smartest thing to do is to play the move after the report rather than trying to guess what might happen like before the earnings, and it's just like a losing game. So let's be be smart this earnings season. Let's not gamble on earnings reports. Trade smart, trade disciplined, and don't gamble on earnings. But looking at Netflix right now, Tom, uh, the stock has been skyrocketing nonstop over like the past couple of years. And it's to the point now where it's just up so much where it's just like uh, where now it's getting harder and harder for the stock to continue to rise. So looking at it in the short term, I am a little bit skeptical of this one. And especially if we see like a continued sell off, I really would not be too surprised if this one got back to like the $500 level over like the next couple months. But again, a lot of it will depend on the, um, I guess you could say condition's of the overall market and how the uh, tensions in the Middle East progress and everything like that. But either way, I'm a little bit skeptical on Netflix in the short term. Yeah, that $500 level is going to be huge, Mike. That'll actually be like right where the gap fills. I'm sure that we'll see a lot of buyers want to come in around that whole dollar mark too. And I wouldn't be surprised, even if it did pull down to 500, like it would still be overall on a pretty good uptrend over the past few years and still look pretty good, even on like a long-term basis. So a lot of these pullbacks, I think that are starting to happen in the market, whether you're looking at Netflix or Nvidia or AMD or just any of them, uh, they're kind of more the healthy pullbacks, right? Like we're we're not necessarily seeing these stocks necessarily drop off the table yet, but these pullbacks are almost necessary considering the prices that these stocks are at. And we've been preaching this for a while, Mike. You know, I'm not going to be those guys that, uh, well, you know, we don't want to be those guys that sit out there and say, oh, we told you so, we, we told you so. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, really look at the warnings out there really try to look at the macroeconomic reason as of like why the market's turning over. You know, they, they keep pushing out rate cuts further, not looking good. Inflation's not going down the way that they thought it would. And it's starting to change the outlook for things here in the short term. So yeah, it's going to be a wild ride over the next couple of weeks, Mike. And I know this downside movement has been very fun to play intraday. I know that today it was fairly choppy, but man, some of these moves lately have been amazing. 
Yep. Um, another, uh, I don't want to say stock, but another asset that a bunch of people have uh, close eyes on for tomorrow is Bitcoin as we are getting closer and closer to this halving event. And uh, Bitcoin is uh, currently at around $63,000 right now. And of course, it's fluctuate, fluctuating quite a bit. But uh, uh, there's definitely been a lot of hype with this one. But even with Bitcoin, like I don't love the uh, the action with it. Yeah, I really don't either, Mike. Like whenever I look at Bitcoin in the short term, even if you go out to a daily, it's like, wow, we're going into this halving event. I think a lot of people right now are kind of worried. Uh, and with how much Bitcoins went up here as well, uh, I think a lot of investors are scared in this type of uh, sector slash market. You know, I don't want to call Bitcoin a sector, I guess, but uh, in the crypto market, you know, people are probably a little bit worried. Bitcoin's up 360% from its low and it's kind of been mimicking some of these stocks you know like nvidia amd i'm not saying the charts are the same but you know we're, we've been seeing that good upside pressure it seems like everybody's starting to get a little worried and they're starting to de-risk here but the having event's going to be huge so definitely watch out tomorrow night after the market closes looks like sometime around like 11 p.m maybe 10 p.m eastern the time keeps fluctuating a little bit but you can go to watch your guru and see the countdown whether you're looking at Bitcoin, the overall market, big tech stocks, basically anything else out there, what we are seeing right now is money de-risking. And it makes sense when you have, uh, as you mentioned, Tom, a couple minutes ago, the Fed continuously pushing out rate cuts um, and then also inflation not moving down in the way that everyone would like it to move down, plus rising tensions in the Middle East and sky high valuations. It makes a lot of sense for you know people to de-risk. And that doesn't mean that the market's going to crash by any means, but it also can mean that some Sometimes stocks can fall rather than just going up every single day like we've seen since November of 2023. The market we're in right now is not the same market that we were in a couple weeks ago, and it's certainly not the same market we were in a couple months ago. It's changing, and that's not a bad thing. You just have to adapt to it. And more specifically, uh, we are just seeing a weakening market. We are seeing increased profit taking. We are seeing the market, um, you know, just pull back, right? So what this will present is when. When stocks get low enough is opportunities to buy the dip for the long term, but in the meantime, it'll present uh, opportunities in a more bearish sense. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you have to adapt to changing market conditions or you'll get ran over. But um, on a different note, Tom, another area of the market that is starting to pick up a little bit of steam today are uh, the weed stocks. CGC popped up by 20%. So what's going on here? Yeah, they popped up by 20%. They actually had a really good move. I will say this, though. They started falling down in after hours a little bit, which is definitely a little bit scary. But CGC has some pretty good news in the short term. So it looks like they uh, we do have a national conference of state legislatures. They're actually, they sent a letter to Congress, and they're kind of trying to get that Safer Banking Act uh push through Congress here. And it looks like Congress, you know, I feel like, Mike, that this banking act has been going on for like uh, almost a whole year now, just sitting there, right? Like, are they ever going to finally get this thing going? I sure hope so. I feel like we haven't heard any news about it in quite a while. So it's good to see that going on. And I know CGC had that Canopy USA vote last Friday, and a lot of people are also attributing maybe some of the uptrend to that. But at the end of the day, I mean, CGC specifically really killed it today, up 20 when you go look at some of the other MJ stocks like Tilray, they didn't really do anything. And even MSOS had like, it was down in the red by 2%. So I don't know, CGC specifically is having a great move from this. So keep a close eye on CGC. Uh, weed stocks like this one are some of the craziest stocks in the market when they are moving to the upside in a big way and they have positive news and they're having true bullish movement. They have like that exponential potential, but whenever they're not doing that, they're uh, pretty nasty and they're definitely extremely volatile. The best way to play these types of stocks is either, you know, in a very short term basis or just uh, make a decision on, you know, whether you are going to commit to um, holding the stock stock for X amount of time or, you know, for whatever reason, right? But it's very hard to trade stocks like this one on like a day by day basis, just trying to follow the news, given how crazy volatile they are and given, um, you know, just how much they gap up and down. But either way, keep a close eye on this one. But in the same way, Netflix was kind of the star of the show today with earnings. We do have a couple other stocks set to report for tomorrow. So what's on the schedule? 
Yeah, so tomorrow morning we do have American Express, ticker symbol AXP, and Procter & Gamble. Those are two pretty big stocks there tomorrow morning before the market opens. I'm personally going to be more interested in Procter & Gamble just to kind of see those sales and just how they've been doing overall. But American Express is pretty big too. So uh, there's even a couple more like Regions Financial or Regions, Huntington, uh, the 5th, the fifth, third bank, and a couple more. So it's going to be a fairly big day. Obviously, nothing like Netflix, though. So, you know, don't we don't really have to worry about like these stocks necessarily like making or breaking the market, in my opinion. Sounds good. And on some different news, uh, we recently had um, Crocs have a groundbreaking, world changing <laughs> partnership with Pringles to release a product that. All of us uh, wanted, but never had, and that is a uh, a Crocs boot that ha that holds Pringles in it. <laughs> I I saw this the other day, and I was I was like, is this April Fools or, or what is going on here? <laughs> like like what is the product engineer? Th what, what, what were they thinking when they designed this? Like, is someone just gonna be like out for a run and be like, oh hold on, let me just. Uh, grab a Pringle from my shoe. <laughs> I mean, Mike, it would make more sense to me to like, if Pringles would have done a partnership with like the North Face or something, you know, or did like a, like an armband, you know, I'm not reaching down to my shoes to grab a, a Pringle, you know, all the dirt gets in there and stuff. But uh, I, I don't know, Mike, it's definitely one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. And I was like, what, like, does Crocs have a stock? And I was like, wow, I forgot they actually do. I uh, made some drawings on it a long time ago, but Mike, uh, when I went and looked at Crocs stock, I was like, wow, you know, this stock's pretty volatile. I mean, on this recent uptrend, it's up over 100% at the high here. Yeah, that's the thing. So looking at CROX, it has been booming ever since uh, 2020, but I will be, <laughs> will be honest, like, uh, the, the thought process behind the engineering team or the, the strategic <laughs> team at Crocs does have me a little bit worried for the future. <laughs> I don't know about this idea, but it was, it was one of those like crazy new, news articles that I uh, came across where I was just like, you know what? This is kind of interesting <laughs> and, and very funny. So why not bring it up for a minute? <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, everybody likes Crocs, right? No, I, I'm just kidding. I, I'm not a Crocs guy personally, but I, I work out with a guy, Mike, that wears Crocs like every night to the gym. And sometimes I'm like, what are you doing? But uh, I, maybe I'll have to tell him about this. I'll, I'll take a picture for you guys and throw it in Discord. Too bad uh, all these uh, Crocs uh, Pringles holders sold out. <laughs> oh, no, I can't even get one now. That's great. Well, yeah. hey, uh, either way, uh, you know, looking at the stock, I mean, I will say this, my Crocs stock is coming up on pretty big support around like that 110 mark. Definitely have to keep it on the radar here in the short term. Maybe the, uh, the Pringles will help boost it a little bit. Oh, boy. All right, well, let's get right into the good stuff for tomorrow, which are some setups. So I'm looking at TSM pretty closely to the down side right now. Uh, they reported earnings yesterday and they fell and a handful of uh, different stocks in the semiconductor industry lately have been weakening as uh, is as it's only normal given how much these stocks have exploded over the past year. But looking at TSM, I'm looking for an earnings continuation to the downside with this one. I would love to see a break below the $130 level especially, but even if it started to like get below like 131 that uh, would present a decent opportunity, but uh, either way, it's close on watch. Yeah, I really like that support, Mike. And with those earnings, you know, I, I know that you preach this all the time. You know, don't play the earnings play, play the move after. And this is going to be a prime example of that. If we see a prime breakdown tomorrow, that could make for a really fun play here in the short term. Uh, with my first play, I'm going with Zoom here. And this one's actually to the upside. So Zoom's moving off a pretty good long term support. And if they're able to break above $60.80 tomorrow, right around that double top in pre market and after the market opened uh, today, if they could break, that then I'll go ahead and look at calls but I will say that whenever I go out to like an hourly chart this uh support here around 59 to 60 is pretty big all right sounds good another stock I'm watching pretty closely is Bank of America and it is uh also to the downside uh bank stocks reported earnings recently and uh most of them had like a negative reaction to earnings but it hasn't been anything like too too crazy but either way Bank of America just retested that $36 resistance level and um, I see this industry weakening in the short term so I am looking at this one to the downside but at the end of the day if we do see it break up 
above $36, that resistance level, and hold it, then I'm not going to try and force this one to the downside. It's more so just like a uh, low risk uh, setup I'm looking at where it's like, I would love to see it like reject very soon and then continue lower. And in the worst case scenario, if it does not reject that $36 resistance, then it's just, uh, you know, just like a failed play. Yeah, a lot of these bank stocks had pretty bad moves on their earnings, and uh, this one's one that's just retesting resistance. I'll definitely be watching it for another push lower here. I know the tech stocks have been pretty rough, and we keep talking about them to the downside. I've been mentioning Tesla a lot to the downside lately, and that one has been continually just selling off day after day after day. I will say I'm not going to be looking at it tomorrow because it's right around that 150 support. That is worrying me a bit. So I'm going over to Microsoft today, and this one's getting close to 400. So for tomorrow, I'm looking for a break under like 403, and I'm looking to target maybe like 401 to 400 as some good targets to the downside. And of course, we have to look at Bookmap here on Microsoft. We can see that big $400 support. There's about 81,000 shares that were stacked up there at the end of the day. It's a pretty significant level. So I'm going to really watch 400 tomorrow. I want to see the stock get down to there and test it. So I'll be looking for that downside opportunity, Mike. And uh, with the way these tech stocks have been going, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up hitting 400 tomorrow. The $400 level on Microsoft is a pretty big level for multiple reasons. Uh, it's a giant psychological level. So as we look at, you know, any stock, but in this example, we'll, we'll look at Microsoft, you know, you have a people on the sidelines that are looking at it and saying, okay, I will buy this stock at $400 or, you know, $350 or 300, just like those big psychological levels have a lot of a uh, buy order stacked up there as we can clearly see on book maps. So, you know, considering that Microsoft is getting closer and closer to that level and considering how much it has been up over the past year, um, it's kind of like a make or break point for the stock. So it'll definitely be interesting. And uh, I'll also have a close eye on it. But, Tom, I think we are all set and ready to jump right into today's momentum plays. And with the first one, we have the airline stock that uh, just won't stop, and that is UAL to the upside. Yeah, they did very well today with their earnings again. Now, I know the earnings were earlier in the week, but they've been continuing up very, very nicely. This is like a prime example of an earnings continuation play here. Uh, if this one breaks above $52 tomorrow, go ahead and look at calls. All right, with the next one, we have MU to the downside. Yeah, Micron and the chip stocks have been pretty rough. Micron had a really rough day today. So if they break under this 111 mark, then I'll eye up those puts. All right, and then with the last one, we have BABA for both directions. Yeah, BABA -B -A here. So this stock was actually fairly flat over the past couple days, but I noticed there's a bit of a bottom here right around the 68.80 to 68.75 mark. So if it breaks under 68.75, then go ahead and look at puts to the downside. But if it ends up bouncing off that double bottom and breaking resistance around 69.30, then I have calls. All right, so we have the upside level for BABA, and then we also have the downside level as well. Don't forget about the downside level with MU, and then the upside level with UAL. These three stocks are on watch for potential day trades tomorrow if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. We are looking for strong, powerful, consistent price action, as that is what ultimately uh, offers the opportunity in a short-term momentum-style trade. So keep a close eye on these three stocks and Tom let's jump right into today's 1.8 million dollar big money trade of the day and we are looking at yet another semiconductor related stock which is MRVL we've been talking about these ones so much lately um, especially given uh, TSM reported earnings yesterday and we had ASML's earnings uh, the day before that but regardless, looking at ticker symbol MRVL, uh, it has been weak in the short term. And the big money put one point, a little bit over $1.8 million into the 60 strike put options that expire on July 19th of 2024. These options have a good amount of time to them. They are a little bit out of the money. So due to the nature of an option like this, it has a relatively low probability of expiring in the money. But if it does expire in the money, it can be a pretty nice winner. Um, you know, options like this would mainly benefit if we saw a good size pullback, which is not necessarily unreasonable given all the geopolitical risk we have in the market right now, as well as just big tech stocks just pulling back. So it's definitely not a bad setup, but it is a, a little bit higher risk than most. 
Mike, where's my head and shoulders traders at? You know, this one's like one of the more prime head and shoulders patterns that I think I've ever seen out there. Uh, you know, I mean, that that is t pretty textbook. If you're a, if you're somebody that like eyes up these patterns like this, I know some people like them more than others. At the end of the day, though, there's been a lot of solid rejections off these overhead resistances here on MRVL. And it's also about to test that major area of support. So if that support gives out, I think these will look really good, Mike. And personally, I don't think I'm going to enter this till I see like a breakdown below like 63.50. So that, that's kind of what I'm going to be looking at here in the short term with this one. I'm even going to actually make an alert here. So uh, I'll post it up in Discord for you guys if the, uh, if the alert gets hit. Sounds good. And, you know, when it comes to big money plays, there's definitely nothing wrong with just uh, setting an alert like you did, Tom. So if the stock does start to move in the desired direction, you know, you can get notified right away and that could be the entry signal. But good stuff there. And looking at everything in the market right now, uh, we're at an interesting point, right? The market is certainly a lot weaker than it has been in a while. But at the same time, it's not like the market is crashing. The SPY barely fell today. And, uh, you know, it's just more of a slow fade lower more than anything else. So in environments like this, um, it makes a lot more sense to trade lighter and be more selective with the trades. There's no need to place a trade every single day, especially if the market isn't moving. It's better to sit on the sidelines, place no trade at all, rather than to try and force some, you know, very small opportunity that might be presented and uh, have a decent chance of losing, right? So in my opinion, it makes sense to trade lighter right now. As always, adapt to the market on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, we are at a very big support level at uh, $500 right now with SPY, so keep that close on watch. But Tom, do you have any other final thoughts heading into tomorrow? Yeah, there's not really anything on the economic calendar for tomorrow. Just maybe uh, just a couple things here, like the like a little Fed speech. So don't be too worried about that. I think we can mainly just focus on these big supports and the overall price action. I do not like the way SPY closed under 500 today. If we open up tomorrow and start to see a lot of negative movement under like 499 and 498.50, it's not going to be good. So just keep being adaptable out there, guys. Everybody who's been adapting has been doing great, and uh, I, well, most people, anyways, right? But I. I, uh, I'm glad to see that a lot of people have been, uh, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, positivity in the discord. And I know that some people who are kind of stuck to the bull side aren't, aren't really sharing the same type of positivity right now, but it's still good to be bullish over the long term, Right. So, uh, just keep up the nice work guys, keep being adaptable and let's end the week strong tomorrow. It's the last day of the week. And it's also worth noting that not every day will be sunny. Sometimes you'll do everything right and still lose in the market, and that's just how it is sometimes. But what's more important than anything else in these environments is to make sure that on those cloudy days that uh, your risk is kept in check so they don't uh, hurt you too bad. So that way, when the next sunny day comes along, you're in a position that uh, you, know, you can take advantage of it. So keep that in mind. Keep that risk in check. And I want to give a giant shout-out to today's a member of the day bombs in the stocked up discord huge shout out to you and uh we'd love to see some uh, more screenshots like this so awesome job there and uh keep up all of the great work last but not least if you're new to the channel consider crushing that subscribe button to get our videos recommended to you more often and besides that let's end the week with a bang